16 paranoia filled days later. Hey guys, welcome back to my part two video on how to knit the Harry Styles JDB Anderson cardigan seen here. Today I'm going to show you how to do three things and three things only. The first thing, how to knit these panels together. The second thing, how to fix your horrendous mistakes. The third thing, how to deal with all these little tails and everything. So the first thing you need to do is identify your mistakes. Me, I made a lot of them, so I'm going to be showing you how to fix nearly every single mistake that's possible with this pattern. And I figured out for this video, I'm only going to need a couple supplies. The first supply, a sharpie. Pins for holding your work together while you're knitting it. I couldn't find any, so I'm using binder clips. Scissors. A lightweight red yarn, otherwise known as Aran yarn, A-R-A-N yarn needles. I got these in a the size 13. I don't think the size really matters too much as long as they're big enough. Um, these were just the biggest ones that they had at the Michaels by me. Okay, so the first mistake I'm actually going to deal with here is the fact that for some of these squares, you're going to have like lines coming down. And really the only one that you want that is for when you have a black square and you're going to have the black line going on the square below it. I did that here. So what we're going to do is instead of trying to fix that black line, we're actually just going to take a Sharpie and we're just going to color it in just to blend out that orange line and make it look like it's actually part of the square above it. I already kind of started doing it with this one here. You can kind of see that this line was red before and as you started coloring in it with a Sharpie, like I have to do some more, but I think that's just going to hide it and honestly, nobody's going to know. Okay, so here we have my lovely mistake with this orange line right in the middle of everything. So we're just gonna take our handy dandy Sharpie and we're just gonna go to town. Look at that. Mm -hmm. And we're just gonna paint this and nobody is gonna know the difference. And I don't think I will ever wash this sweater because I'm afraid it'll fall apart. So it'll be fine. It'll just smell a little funky. And now, hardly anyone will be able to tell that you made this mistake. I'm also going to quickly do that to this line right here, and then I'm going to let these pieces dry while I work on the other mistakes that I made. Okay, so while those two panels are drying, I'm going to address the next issue that I have. That issue being the fact that I have little holes kind of everywhere. So I'm going to show you how to fill those in and make it look like they're not even there. You won't even notice them. So for this panel, the only real issue is this one hole here, and that's just where I accidentally dropped a stitch when I was knitting this green square. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the same yarn that I used for it, I'm gonna cut a bit off, and I'm going to use my yarn needles, just sew it up and make it look like the pattern just continues there, and I'll just do a little knot on the back to secure it in place. And we're gonna take just a bit of this yarn, probably like, maybe like eight inches of it. We're just going to thread our needle. Okay. Wait, how am I actually going to do this? Wait, so we're just going to go for it. We're going to go through and through here, tie this in, come back around and through the back. Let's see what that does. And that doesn't look so bad, actually. So let me pull one of these. Oh God, what am I doing? Okay, so we're actually going through the back here. We'll just pop this up through here, I guess. Maybe through, yeah, through here, through this one, in through the back, and then down through the back again. And then look, you hardly notice it's there. And I'm just gonna pull this through and I'll tie this in a knot. And 
and no one's gonna know. It's the best part. Look at that. And then ta-da, hole's gone. So the panel that's my biggest issue is actually the first one that I made. This is the center panel of the back side, and it was the first one I started with, starting with this square, then this one, this one, this one. And you can see, compared to my 14 centimeter square, it's huge. <laughs> it's just gigantic. And it also has a ton of mistakes, like this giant hole here, the fact that this one's a little loosey-goosey, and you can like basically see through the whole thing. So I'm gonna show you how to like fortify the back of this and just kind of like cinch it all together. And I don't think the fact that it's like really large is gonna be too much of an issue because when you're sewing the panels together, I can just actually like include a little bit more of this into the sewing so that less of it appears on the front side of the work. Okay, and for this last bit, I'm just gonna take the back side of this square and a knitting needle, knitting sewing needle with a long piece of thread, and I'm just gonna start to sew back and forth just to keep this thing nice and tight so that everything stays together and doesn't show that I have a lot of holes in the piece. So to do that, we're just going to stick the needle through one row here going along the first row, then we're gonna go along the second row so you can kind of see like all these bits that are raised. If we knit on these, then you're not gonna see it on the front side of the piece here. Make the needle and we'll just go through. Stick it in the back here. Through here, we'll just pull through. I can actually pull through quite a bit because I do have a long piece of yarn. We just want the tail left so that we can tie everything together at the end. And we'll just continue knitting all the way through. Okay, now we reach the other end of that square. And then we'll just go and do the second row, this row right here, and we'll come and loop it around the top. And then when we pull and tie to this end, it'll tighten the piece up a little bit and stop it from spreading so much. Okay, so now that all our mistakes are fixed, we're ready to start knitting the panels together. So what you're gonna wanna do is look at the instructions and I'm gonna start with the back like I did before and I'm just gonna start knitting everything together this way. So I'm gonna start with just two and it's important to make sure that you don't get two different panels mixed up. You wanna make sure that you're actually sewing together the correct panels. So I grabbed two that are on the left back side here and I'm just gonna be sewing these together. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is get the front side of each piece and you wanna make a sandwich out of them. So you grab the two fronts and stick them together, all right? And that seam where they meet together is where you're gonna wanna sew them. And you're just gonna do a very simple stitch. If you've ever sewed before, it's just, you know, simple like in and out, in and out, but I'll show you. So here I have the front side of either piece. So we're gonna make that sandwich like I said before. And this is the side that we're going to be sewing together. So this is where the safety pins, or in my case, binder clips come into play. So what you wanna do is make sure that the two top parts are lined up perfectly evenly. I got the two tails together here. And because the red pattern curls a little bit, you wanna make sure that it's completely uncurled and that you're only using the very edge to line up the two pieces together. And when they're lined up, it's important for every panel that you sew together, you want the line between each two squares to match up so that you have one continuous line down the whole back and front and wherever it is. So I'm going to make sure that these two seams between the orange and the hound's tooth and the red and the yellow line up. And this is where you would pin it or fasten it in some way. Then you're going to take your thin red yarn and you're going to pull off about maybe 
three or four arms length worth because you're gonna be sewing this entire four square row together. So you may wanna make sure you have plenty. Just gonna sew it through. Now, when you're sewing this together, you just want a little bit coming in through the needle here and you're not gonna tie these in a knot. What you're gonna do, you're going to take the corner and this is where you're going to start. You're just gonna make sure that you knot these together. So I'm just gonna pull this through. I have a very long piece of yarn to sew these together. You're gonna to wanna to leave a little bit, just the tail end here. And you're just gonna go through again. If I can get it. You just wanna loop that together. And then you can just tie this in a knot, making sure that it's nice and secure. And I'm gonna double knot mine because I am never going to work on this again. And I want it to be secure. All right. And now that that's secure, you're just gonna knit along the seam. Now you wanna make sure that when you're sewing these together, you only wanna catch the outermost row of stitches. So here on the back, you can see just the outermost row because if you do anything on the inside, it's gonna show up in your work. When you pull it apart, you're gonna be able to see this little red thin yarn sticking through and we don't want that. So you're just gonna get the very outermost one and the frequency of your stitches for sewing is you're gonna want like one loop per row. So here, like I have one row here, there's another row right here, a third row, fourth row, fifth row, sixth row. So you're gonna to wanna to do one stitch for each of those to make sure that it's nice and secure. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the needle, come in through the back in that first row there on the very edge, but making sure that everything is secure and you're gonna just pull it through. And then you're gonna go back to where that first loop is, and you're gonna stick the needle through to the back side. And make sure you get that your yarn doesn't get all tangled up, because otherwise it's a nightmare to untangle. Now I'm gonna come in through the back again and go over to that second row, so right about here. Now this process is gonna take a while, but it's important to take your time, otherwise your piece might come apart, and after you spent all this time working on it, you definitely don't want that to happen because I think I would throw myself off my building if that happened to me. And we're gonna come in through the back again, about at the third row, so right about here. We're gonna pull through. And I'm just gonna repeat this process until the whole piece is sewn together. So I now have one of my front sides totally fully connected. As you can see, I have it all sewn in the back and I have all these little tassels hanging down. So in the original pattern, it tells you to actually put these tassels on the front side and to just tie them in a knot. I don't wanna do that. So instead I left them on the back and all I'm gonna do is put a little dab of super glue on all the knots just to secure them in place because this can never come apart. And then I'm just gonna cut them short and then you're never gonna notice them. All right, so that's all I got today. Um, I'm gonna go scream into the void, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe because I'll be uploading a video in another couple weeks and showing you how to attach the arms and hopefully how to attach some of the ribbing to the bottom and the collar maybe. Hmm, see, who knows? Anyway, thanks for watching.